So what is the solution? First, we will apply what is known as the one-minute rule. That rule tells us that if a task takes just one minute, then we must complete it there and then. Too often, we put off tasks because we find them stressful. If it means emailing a client who is traditionally a little grumpy, for instance, then we might put off doing so because we don't want to have to deal with them. But these tasks aren't going to go away. And if it takes just one minute, then it's going to realistically interrupt your day or prevent you from doing the real work. So just do it. This is a fantastic habit to get into. An exception, caveat, to this rule is that you shouldn't let one-minute tasks pull you out of your deep work. Switching between tasks takes a lot of mental energy, meaning that productivity is always lost. The solution? Simply shut off notifications and other distractions to make sure that you will not even know about the task until you unplug. 5 Tips for Avoiding Procrastination Procrastination is the bane of working from home. If you're someone who works at home regularly, then you absolutely need to learn to avoid the temptation to spend the first hour and a half doing nothing at all. Otherwise, you're suddenly working five-hour days instead of eight-hour days, and that's something your employers and clients are going to notice. In this presentation, we're going to look at five tips for crushing procrastination. Accountability. The problem is that there is no accountability for procrastination. This is why it is worse for those that work from home versus those that work in an office. In an office, people are looking over your shoulder, but here you can do whatever you like. One solution is to create stakes for yourself. An easy way to do that? Email your client and tell them that you're going to finish X amount of work and send it to them daily. Suddenly, the option to sit on your thumbs for the first few days on a project is gone. Work in a coffee shop. This won't always be possible depending on your circumstances, but when it is, working in a coffee shop or library is a great way to add some social pressure to your day. You can't sit playing Sonic the Hedgehog now because people will think you're odd. Speaking of which, coffee works great too. Set rewards. Try setting yourself small rewards for accomplishing set amounts of work each day. For example, if you finish the first 2,000 words of an essay you're writing, only then can you give yourself a cup of coffee. Make the project fun. Often, we put things off simply because we don't want to do them. This is why procrastination tends to rear its ugly head more when we're doing particularly dull and dry tasks. The solution is to find a way to make that task more interesting. For example, you might find a way to gamify it, or you may just find a way to add more creativity to the project. Rest properly. Finally, make sure you have some proper downtime and fun during your time off. Often we procrastinate because there are other things we want to do. If you never have time to play video games, read books, or browse Facebook, then that will start creeping into your work. So actually enjoy your time off, and you should find this changes. How to create a highly productive work environment in your home office. If you're working from home, you need to think carefully about the environment you're going to be working in. You're now not only responsible for the work you do, but also for your surroundings. This is important seeing as the space you work in can drastically impact on your ability to stay focused. Now you have the opportunity to create a space that is perfectly conducive to your work style and that will help you to feel inspired, motivated, and comfortable. But too many people will find that the exact opposite thing happens instead. They end up working in squalor and feeling demotivated, cluttered, and distracted as a result. Listen up, and we're going to go over how to get this right and create a home office that you can't wait to sit down to work in. Eudaimonia Machine The Eudaimonia Machine is a hypothetical architectural project described in Cal Newport's book, Deep Work. 
Here, Newport explains what the perfect space would be like in order to encourage focus and productivity. One of the key features of this space was a gallery of sorts including inspiring works and figures. Let's say that you're a writer then. This space might include a typewriter owned by a famous writer, a lot of impressive looking books, or a quote from Shakespeare on a plaque. The idea of this is to help put you in the right headspace, to help you feel inspired and excited to get to work. Comfort. Another important thing for a home office is comfort. When you are uncomfortable, whether that's because the seat is awkward or the desk is the wrong height, this steals attention away from whatever you're doing. Invest in a comfortable chair, an ergonomic keyboard, and anything else that will improve your comfort. Physiology Physiological factors play a big part in our mental state. Things like the level of lighting, the amount of background noise, or even the temperature can all impact on mood and well-being. Make sure you have precise control over these things. Even smells can affect the release of neurotransmitters that impact on mood. Tools Of course, the right tools will play a big role in helping you to be more productive, as will creating a work zone that will make everything you need easily accessible from your one spot. How to create a strict routine when working from home there are many things that you may find you struggle to come to terms with when you start working from home. This is a big shift in the way that you work and approach work, and the result is that many people struggle to adapt. One big example is that the onus is now very much on you to decide how you wish to work. That means that you need to think about how you want your workflow to work, what hours you're going to work, and which tasks you're going to prioritize. In this presentation, we're going to look at how to create a routine that will help you maximize your productivity and get more done. Be strict about downtime. The first tip that many people don't recognize is that it is just as important to be strict about downtime as it is to be strict about your actual work. That's critical because it is during your downtime that you're going to recharge for the day ahead. If you allow your work to creep into the rest of your day, then you're going to find that you end up failing to recharge your batteries properly. Thus, when you do start working, you will find that you have less energy and your mind is other places. Enjoy flexibility. With that said, it is entirely up to you how and when you work, depending on the nature of your work. In other words, if you're someone who works best in the mornings, then there's no longer anything stopping you from working from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Alternatively, you can work an extra 1.5 hours every day and then take Fridays off. See what works best for you. Create accountability. Something else to consider is whether you have the ability to force yourself to be productive or whether you need an external form of accountability to make sure that you stay on course. Rather than create false stakes, setting punishments for yourself, etc., you can achieve this simply by changing the way you work with your boss or clients. For example, tell them that you will send in your work every single day. Suddenly, you have no option to procrastinate or to work slowly because they expect to see something at the end of every single working day. This can add a lot of discipline to your work process. How to deal with loneliness and social isolation when you work from home. If you have made the decision to work from home, then there is a good chance that you're someone who considers themselves to be an introvert. As such, you are probably more than happy to shut yourself away and to work on things you find rewarding. But even for an introvert, this can sometimes become a little lonely and isolating. And meanwhile, if you're an extrovert who has been forced to work from home through no choice of their own, it can be excruciating. In this presentation, we'll look how to deal with the loneliness and social isolation that comes with working from home. Find other ways to socialize. 
The first and most important way to ensure you don't go mad working from home is to try to find other ways to get your stimulation and engagement. For instance, if you're stuck at home with your family, you can take lunch with them in order to make the isolation a little more bearable. In fact, this is a huge upgrade. Instead of being forced to work alongside people you don't really know all that well, you are now spending time with people you actually love. You can also get on a video call with a friend or coworker using Zoom or Skype. For group video calls, a great app you could use is called House Party, which is available for iOS and Android devices. Work together on projects. If you're self-employed, then finding ways to work with others, especially friends, can make a big difference. Collaborating on a project with someone you get on well with is extremely rewarding, and it's a fantastic way to strengthen your friendship. Go out. Again, this isn't always possible, but where you can, why not go outside and work? Working from home doesn't have to mean working from home in the literal sense. All it really means is working not at the office. So why not take your laptop to a cafe and get some work done there? Or alternatively, why not work on a park bench and enjoy the sun on your face? How to deal with small tasks and prevent overwhelm. Often, it is not the biggest tasks that create the most stress for us. Big tasks loom over us, but they are simple and easy to understand. Instead, then, it is the smaller tasks that typically leave us stressed and overwhelmed. More specifically, it is when lots of small tasks build up that we can often find ourselves feeling snowed under and unsure of where to start. General advice is to tackle the biggest and most ugly project first in a working day. This is referred to as eating the frog. This is good advice as it means you can focus on providing value and getting work done rather than getting bogged down with administrative tasks. But if it means that you never quite cross those tasks off, you end up with a building pressure. There are emails to send, bills to pay, letters to open, broken web pages to fix, and all of this plays constantly on your mind even during your time off. This is what Tim Ferriss refers to as an open loop. That is any task that remains incomplete and meanwhile causes you stress and anxiety. So what is the solution? First, we will apply what is known as the one-minute rule. That rule tells us that if a task takes just one minute, then we must complete it there and then. Too often, we put off tasks because we find them stressful. If it means emailing a client who is traditionally a little grumpy, for instance, then we might put off doing so because we don't want to have to deal with them. But these tasks aren't going to go away. And if it takes just one minute, then it's going to realistically interrupt your day or prevent you from doing the real work. So just do it. This is a fantastic habit to get into. An exception, caveat, to this rule is that you shouldn't let one-minute tasks pull you out of your deep work. Switching between tasks takes a lot of mental energy, meaning that productivity is always lost. The solution? Simply shut off notifications and other distractions to make sure that you will not even know about the task until you unplug. Finally, any tasks that take longer than one minute should be added to a to-do list. You can then set aside a designated time to work through these every day. How to enter and stay in a flow state when working from home. Have you ever been working on a project when suddenly you find yourself falling into a perfect rhythm? After facing serious procrastination and resistance, all of that seems to fall away and you find yourself in a perfect state of focus. That's when the real work gets done. Without distractions, you are able to stay on task and plow through what you need to get done. But there's more to it than that too. According to psychologists, flow states allow us to perform our very best work on a consistent basis. 
we can tap into reserves of productivity and even creativity that are normally inaccessible. So how do you get into this state? Let's take a look at some strategies and tips that we know to work. Rest. The first tip is to ensure that you start the day in the best way possible. That is to say that you shouldn't be overtired or stressed. Make sure that during your downtime, you rest properly so that you can return to work feeling recharged and effective. Sensory deprivation. Our brain has two attentional networks. There is one that is responsible for our internally directed attention, what we choose to focus on, and one that is dictated by external cues that grab and hold our attention. In order to stay on task then, you need to block out these things that would normally try to pull you away from work. That means a level of sensory deprivation, which you can often accomplish by listening to music or white noise on headphones. Using a large monitor can also help, as this will take up more of your field of view. Inspiration what many people don't realize is that their productivity is determined more so by their emotion than by logic. In other words, you will find it easiest to be productive when you actually feel interested in and excited by the work that you're required to do. A great tip is to look at examples of the kind of work you intend to do in order to see how it looks best. Just start. Finally. A last tip is to simply start doing whatever it is you need to do. Don't worry if you don't feel inspiration right away, or if you find yourself resisting your need to work. Just plow through and keep going, and eventually, you'll fall into a groove. The perfect morning routine for a productive working day. What you do first thing in the morning will set the mood for the entire day to follow. If you have a strong, productive start to your day, then you're going to find it much easier to dive straight into work and get lots done. But if you allow procrastination to creep in at this early point, or if you engage in unhealthy habits, then you're going to find it's much harder to get work done. And this becomes doubly important if you're working from home. With no commute, you have every opportunity to take things slow and to forget about things like grooming. This makes a huge difference to your headspace going forward and seriously limits how productive you're likely to be as the day progresses. This is why the most productive and successful people in the world all have morning routines. In this presentation, we'll discuss some tips to help you create yours. Be realistic. The first and most important step is to make sure that any morning routine you devise is realistic. What that means is that you shouldn't try to come up with something that is extremely elaborate or lengthy, and certainly not to start with. If you've never been able to get up before 7 a.m., then what is the point in including that as part of your morning routine? If you have never stuck at meditation, then why claim you're going to do 30 minutes every morning? It is far better to have a simpler morning routine relying on a few rules, but that you will actually stick to. Use apps. There are plenty of apps out there such as habit tracking apps that are designed to help you stick to your goals and plans. Try using a few to see if they can help. Some key things to try. With all that said, here are some popular options to include in your morning routine. Exercise. This helps wake you up and encourages good habits. Meditation. Even five minutes will let you take control of your day. Minimal screen time. Many people believe they shouldn't look at any electronic devices for at least the first hour after waking up. Time outdoors. Spending some time outside will help set your body clock. To-dos. Writing a to-do list first thing is a great way to stay on top of things you need to accomplish. Try incorporating any of these that resonate with you and see how it changes your productivity during the day that follows. The top tools and apps for getting more work done from home. Working from home is a mixed blessing. 
On the one hand, you'll now have the freedom to work from the comfort of your own four walls. You can drink as much coffee as you like, and you don't have a commute. But on the flip side, you're surrounded by distractions. You can't easily speak to your colleagues, and you need to manage your time entirely by yourself. That's where the top apps and gadgets can come in handy for helping you to do more. Let's talk about some of the best. Asana. For managing big projects with a team of collaborators, tools like Basecamp and Asana are invaluable. Asana will let you create new tasks, assign people, and share updates with collaborators. You can add attachments too, and there are apps available for all major platforms. Slack. Slack is essentially WhatsApp for Teams. Sending an email to ask small questions is time-consuming and certainly not optimal. So Slack exists to let you speak to colleagues, as you might do by tapping them on the shoulder in a real office setting. Watch out, though. Slack can be a time sink. Todoist. If you tend to work solo, then Todoist is a similarly indispensable tool. This is a to-do app that will let you create tasks for yourself and set reminders. It's available on all major platforms, and there's even an Apple Watch app. The best feature of Todoist is the natural language interpretation. This lets you say things like, take the trash out every Monday, which will then automatically renew on Monday with a due date for that day. Notion Notion is a note-taking app that is significantly more powerful than most of the competition. That's because each note can become a database, a flowchart, or a page. You can embed images, videos, and even websites. And you can even export your notes as HTML websites. The whole tool is far more like a content management system in terms of what it can do, and many people refer to it as their second brain. Freedom. For those who struggle not to get distracted by the web without a boss breathing over their shoulder, Freedom is an app that lets you block specific apps and web pages. That means you can't access Facebook during work hours, which can instantly quadruple your work output. These five hacks will make working from home much more enjoyable. Working from home can be a mixed blessing. For some, this is an ideal way to spend more time in their own environment, to get away from irritating colleagues, and to get rid of the commute. For others, this can feel a little like being under house arrest. Here are some tips that will help to ensure you fall into that former camp. Adopt flexi time. Depending on your precise work arrangements, working from home probably means you now have the luxury of deciding how and when you wish to work. That means you can get up early and finish at 2 p.m., or you can have the morning off and work into the evening. Mess around with what works best for you. Listen to music. Music can make a huge difference to how long and dull a day feels, and it can also help to keep you focused by blocking out distracting sounds. Invest in some good noise-canceling headphones. Watch movies and TV. This might sound counterproductive, but in fact, you can actually watch movies and TV while working at the same time. This is a strategy that Tim Ferriss has been known to use and that is useful for distracting that more creative part of your brain that doesn't enjoy dull work. The key is to watch something you already know very well and to take the sound off. This makes it a background distraction that you can gaze at occasionally while touch typing. It's just enough stimulation to prevent you from getting pulled away from your work. Surround yourself with inspiration. Inspiration is one of the key and most important tools for getting more work done. If you can bring yourself to feel inspired by the work you're doing, then it won't be a struggle to get yourself to start it and see it through. What can help in this regard, then, is to surround yourself with things you personally find inspiring. That might mean examples of great works in your field or just images of the people who inspire you. Spend time with others. With your office time gone, you might find yourself going a bit mad from the social isolation. 
a good solution is to spend lunch times with others or to meet after you finish work. You've traded time with irritating colleagues for time with the people you love. It's an upgrade. Why you should tackle the biggest challenge first. You sit down at your computer, boot it up, and take a look at your to-do list. What do you find? Several big projects and a slew of smaller tasks that need doing. That's before you've even opened your emails. So what do you do? Which projects to get started first? The answer? Whichever task is the biggest and most unappealing. This is what is referred to as eating the frog, which in turn comes from a Mark Twain quote. If it's your job to eat a frog, it's best to do it first thing in the morning. And if it's your job to eat two frogs, it's best to eat the biggest one first. Another way to look at this is like so. It's better to have a big project behind you than in front of you. The issue with trying to tackle smaller projects and tasks first is that they have a tendency of building up and running over. If you tackle a long list of to-dos, then you're going to find yourself having to tick a lot of things off before you ever sit down to work. This can leave you exhausted, but it also often means you won't actually have time to accomplish much else come the end of the day. As the day goes on, you also lose willpower and energy, meaning that you will tend to spend longer on those bigger projects. There's now a very real threat of it not getting done. Usually, the biggest and most unpleasant task is the one that will provide the most value. This is the one that clients pay the most for, or that is the most important for your employers. Thus, if you complete this task first, you know that you've accomplished the thing that is most valuable. You've done the actual work. This is also a great tool for building and developing the kind of willpower you need to stay productive and self-motivated. There is an exception to this rule, though, of course. That is when you have something that is urgent to do. If a task has a shorter deadline and is something you can't push back, then you should complete this first to avoid getting in trouble. Then the next task will be the biggest and most challenging. Everything else goes on your to-do list.